Let's dig deeper with Don Wood, the president and CEO of Federal Real Investment Trust, and incidentally, the first read executive we've had on in ages. Mr. Wood, welcome <laughs> back to Bad Money. Jim, it's great to be back on, man. Hope you're doing well. Uh, doing fine. Hope your family's doing well. Very good. All right, Don, I've, I've been on all your calls for I don't know how many years. Don, I have never seen you bring the passion, it, not just the, including the curse word, but the passion that you had. Uh -huh. And I want to give you the floor because people think shopping centers are dead. People think no one's shopping. People think restaurants are done. Gym's done. Bankruptcy's galore. And yet you raise a dividend. What's that about? Well, let's, boy, you got to unpack a lot there, Jim. There's a lot to talk about. And, uh, you know, are things a mess in the middle of a pandemic? Of course they are. But to me, it's not about today. It's about a number of things. Whether we'll be able to make our way through this, I, I could not tell you how confident I am that that's the case. And more importantly, what's going to happen on the other side of this? Let, let's start with the dividend for a second. First of all, in a REIT, the dividend is probably more important right. to investors as a component of their total return than it is to most C-Corp companies, I would think. And so there should be, at least in my view, a, a real robust attempt to continue to, to effectively go through with the bargain that those investors paid for when they invested in the company. So the notion of, of, of continuing investments, a real important part of the federal, so much so, as you pointed out, 53 years, that's since 1967. And while there hasn't been a pandemic like this since 1967, there's been a whole bunch of recessions. There's been a whole bunch of interest rates in the high teens, all kinds of other things. And this company was able to continue to pay its dividend. Why and how? We're built for this and we're built to power through this. And it's not just in terms of the balance sheet and the liquidity, which is critically important. Even now, we're, we sat at the end of June with $2 billion worth of, of liquidity, both cash and an unused credit line, even with all the development that we're going to do, even with paying the dividend continually by February of next year, which I think you would agree we'd have an awful lot more visibility to the future, we'll still have $1.4 billion worth of liquidity right, but die, uh, at die. the company. So we can pay it. All right. Now, you can pay. It doesn't mean you should pay it, right? Right. So let me right, get right. there for a second. Okay. If you okay. believe we can, then what? why should we? It's all about our confidence in what happens on the other side of this. And that's all based on not just the real estate itself, but more importantly, every conversation that we're having these days with tenants, prospective tenants, about where we're trying to get to on the other side of this. It's all about one premise, improving the where the, the locations that they are doing business in. Well, with so putting, in, 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 putting an Amazon warehouse improve the location? <laughs> We'll have that conversation if you want to about the mall side. I'll get there in a, in a second if you'd like to. But 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 not for us, not in the shopping centers, not in the mixed use, not in the lifestyle stuff. Rather, what we're talking about is, is if you've been operating in that B or that C shopping center, here is that opportunity to improve your location. Now, why would you do that? Not only Not only because it's a proven retail location, but more importantly, Today, think about it from a tenant's perspective. They don't know who their co-tenancy is going to be right, over the next right. few years. They don't know who their landlord is in, in, in terms of, of or, or needing to have a landlord that is liquid, that is visionary, that knows they'll be their partner in terms of an uncertain future. So, I'm, done. I, I'm in the restaurant business. When it gets cold, we have no outside seating. We right. don't know what we're going to do. You have a lot of restaurants. You've come on many times. Experiential, experiential. The experiential's hurting you. Um, you've got sure. sick. What? How many different companies are bankrupt? That I know they're keeping the ones that are you're in. You're in, but they're chiseling away at your income everywhere, Don. Jim, there's no question that that we entered into this whole mess in an over retailed environment in the right. U.S. Right. Well, certainly. What, no matter what category you're talking to, talking about, this will exacerbate failings. This will exacerbate the oversupply. That's the macro condition. There's, there's no question about that. But to me, that means there won't be, not everybody can be a winner here, so you better be pretty careful. You have to ask me, but where's, Don, your demand going to come from to be able to backfill and to grow and to create value on the other side of this? That's where I'm saying, look at the, the improvement in, real estate quality mm -hmm. that 
tenants who hadn't had that opportunity before can do now. That's what we're hearing. That's not a guess. Those but are do the you questions. need a vaccine? Does your strategy need a vaccine? First of all, the whole, every strategy, in my view, of a company, any company that's been hurt by this needs a vaccine. Okay. So fair, let's fair. let's get that off the table. Absolutely, there needs to be a, a vaccine. But but absent that, does not it doesn't mean, from my point of view, that that we won't get through this and be able to create everything I'm thinking about is not about today. It's about later in 21. But, but, but David Simon 22. says the same thing to me. But then you know you had to adjust his dividend. You know, look. The enclosed mall business is a different business. Right. right. And when it, just going back to the, the Amazon for that, I mean, can you, I mean, the, the whole notion of last mile uh, delivery of, uh, of a good right. has been the bane of, of, of online forever. Does it make sense to effectively get closer and, and you know, the close in suburban malls to, to do that? Sure it does. I hope they do. Now, I don't know what that does to the merchandising of the, of the mall, but that's that's a smaller problem, frankly, than 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 you know getting the right tenant in that space. But to me, Jim, nobody argues about this. The best way to deliver a, a a good to the end user is to have that end user go to the store and pick it up. That's why what we're doing with the pickup, which, as far as I know, is the most comprehensive landlord right. organized program out in the street. And that's not something for this month or next month. That's forever. That's the way you engage the community with your uh, bricks and mortar retail. Maybe. All right, so Don, we're, we're going to have to cut it short. But uh, look, I know that if it's going, if anyone's going to pull it off, it's you. Uh, I did, it off. Everyone Just needs to read the conference call because you lay it all out. And I believed after I read the conference call, and I was skeptical before I did, Don. But I believe. All right. Jim, let's just show you over time. All right, fair enough. That's Don Wood, the CEO of Federal Realty. Remember, he did not cut his dividend. He did not keep his dividend the same. He raised his dividend because he believes in himself and his organization. We have money's back after the break.